right, okay. Sam Simmons for captain. Well, look, actually, speaking of Sam Simmons, um, all black flanker Jerome Kano has come out um, to say that he should be in the England team after England's back row were outperformed once more by Wales on the weekend. So Dylan, why is Sam not getting selected? Is it a question of pride or is it a personal issue, Dylan, that Eddie might have? I don't think it's personal. I don't think Sam has done anything to Eddie or, or whatnot. Um, but I'll tell you what, the, the more we talk about it, the more it's probably not going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, you've said that before, but I think yeah. England are a place now where Eddie Jones has to swallow some pride and yeah. pick four players who are going to be not the future because, you know, that disrespects current Test rugby. You know, it's all about winning the next Test match. But I find it a minor miracle how someone like Sam Simmons isn't playing for England. I, I really do. I really kind of struggle to see. Obviously, Jerome Kano has come out, as he said, in this week. And he's a pretty knowledgeable bloke, a very experienced player and has played in winning sides. And he obviously sees something in Sam Simmons that he thinks would swim, not sink at Test level. Um and there are a lot of fans out there who are baffled by it. I'm sure Sam will get his chance. I know I know we had his chance briefly um, a year or two back with England. But for me, he, he offers something that none of those back row players in England offer. Dan, in your view, who is the best England? Who is the best back row in England? Maybe not Billy on recent form. Simmons on, on form. Um, but we all know what Billy can bring. Um, yeah, but if you're going on form, you'd pick Simmons and you. Um, Did you see Billy made the second most meters pass or th or through contact at the weekend? So yeah. I, I, I was watching your game. Like you must put um, a big old bullseye on Billy when he gets the ball, right? Yeah, because he's a big course, momentum giver. Of big course you do. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but you you do you know you, you pick yeah. players it's like the big momentum givers, and you you know when they get the ball, you know you light up, you get excited, you want to get after them. Every time Billy got the ball, I'm talking two man. I saw a three man tackle at one point, and then you see his stats after the game saying he's making the most meters after contact. It's like, and then it actually really annoyed me that Billy did an article in the week saying he's almost like given into the media narrative saying Billy's not performing. But after the Autumn Nations Cup, he made the second most tackles in the tournament, second most meters and carries in the tournament. It's like he's accepting what people are saying about him when. He's still going all right. He's not doing what Billy did a couple of years ago, but the way Eddie obviously wants to play the game, Billy is fulfilling that role. But if you bring in Sam Simmons, have England got that attacking shape to give Sam Simmons time on the ball like he does at Exeter? I think, like, obviously with Sam Simmons, he's starting liner. Like, yeah, obviously he's got mental feet and gas and stuff. But if you know Billy's running full tilt at you, you're going to send four guys to try and hit him. If Sam Simmons is running at you, will you send the same amount of guys? So potentially he maybe make a bit more yardage because he, he's powerful. He is explosive, but you're not sending the same amount of guys, if that makes sense. But if you know you've got to like gang tackle Billy or he's trundling on, which he still does. Do you know what I mean? So the, there's that argument as well. You know, Billy, he's... Um, sort of because of every no everyone knows what he's done in the past you've got to give him that extra attention and what what, he, what he's good at as well is when he's not getting the ball he's still running them lines so you've got to stick on him regardless and that's where it opens it up for other people so like when he's not getting the ball and other people are going through maybe he doesn't get the credit that he should deserve because of that do you know what I mean um it is it is difficult because every player goes through this in their career when he rocks up at the start of the scene on the start of his career and he's international and he's bulldozing people everyone's like this guy's amazing and then you know as his career goes on you know there's always there'll be people then just henpecking saying oh is he good enough now and that everyone like, all players go through it and then you come out the other side and then they'll be like oh, he's, like you said now you actually go through what he does and then you're like well actually he's doing a bloody good job at what he's doing but because there's like these these little mouse in the background saying, yeah, but he's not doing this and he's not doing that. People are like, well, yeah, he's not doing that. Like, so it, there's an argument. Isn't it for funny? Both, like, so, so that, this happened to me, it? happened to me, Lids, right? As soon, as soon as I went in for that, with that England captaincy, it was like, I wasn't even in the top five hookers in the country and Owen Farrell should be captain. Now Owen's the captain. They're saying he's not even in the top fly halves in the country, which is, 
it just shows how fickle it is. Same with like Mara, we've we've covered that. It's just you know, Jamie George, take take the shirt. Now everyone's saying like Jamie George isn't playing well. It's like man. It's a fickle you world. You can't win. Sport no. is bloody hard. That's why Dan Liddy is so brilliant because he's been doing it for a long time and he's back yeah. and he's going to come back again. He is going to come back again. Well, yeah, Jamie Dan, Roberts look. is going to come back again as well. Oh, God. Oh, boy, that's an even better one. How long have you been out of a shirt? Oh, God, four years, mate. Imagine that comeback story. Three and a half years, yeah. That'd no, be a pretty I'm good comeback story. Arthritis is kicking in, boys. On that uh, World Cup. So we're going to talk about the France semi final. Does that go down as one of the biggest regrets of both yours and Jamie's careers? I can bring you in on that, Jamie. Well, Jamie, you want to go first? I've spoken about it on a previous part. It's the biggest regret of my career. Uh, and I think the best chance Wales will have or have had in recent history of winning a World Cup. Um, yes, they came close uh, in 2019 against the box um, in that semi-final. But just for me, with the side we had, with the momentum we had and the quality in the team, I just can't see if Wales getting a better chance than that. Um, Are you talking about France? Yeah. Uh, France semi-final in 2011, yeah. I'd and Warbs, is that where Warbs dropped that guy? Yeah, yeah. And and everyone's heart bled for him. I, I felt bad for him. Like, that was that was harsh, man. Yeah. Dan, how was that game for you, mate? When you reflect on your career and think about, you know, near misses or... You know, the highs and the lows. Where does that rank? Where does that game yeah. rank for you? Yeah, you obviously, it's it's probably the top in it. It is, you know, you're one game away from a, a World Cup final, and the way that the All Blacks played in that final. Looking back, you know, they it was they didn't play to win. They were just trying not to lose against France. Um, yeah, France and, put you know, the willies I, up the the ABs, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like at the time, you think, ah, oh, don't worry, you know, in another four years, we've got the same side. Well, you know, we'll be that much better, but it doesn't always work like that, does it? Um, and looking back now, you know, that was the opportunity, um, well, for our generation anyway. Um, but yeah, it does it does still hurt. And, you know, you see it like replayed on the telly every now and again. And you see, you know, like Shane Williams is like, oh, I wish I could go back in time. And I think Bomb said the same, Adam Jones said the same. If we knew now what we knew then, sort of thing that that was our that was our time, but you know, in the past, but it's the one that got away. It felt like anyway, feels like. Well, I suppose your incredible performances then got you a British and Irish Lions call up. So was that the proudest moment of your career to date? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, obviously, it's it's like it's like Olympics for rugby players, isn't it? Once every four years, at that opportunity. It doesn't come around that often. Um, and it's not just, you know, playing for your country. Like, you know, growing, in, growing up in Wales, everyone like wants to play for Wales. But like when you play the game, you want to be, play at the best and you, you want to put yourself against the best. And playing at the best is obviously being a British Lion and obviously going on a Lions tour is an amazing experience. Um, but then to obviously go on and, and, and get a test cap, um, it was like, you know, massive icing on the cake. And, before the, the second test, um, I got to captain in the midweek game as well, which was like a massive honour. Um, and, and like looking back, being in that team, in that team huddle, you know, like Faz Manu was in there and like looking around, like Sean O'Brien played. I'm just like, there's no way we're going to lose. we got all these boys and they're absolutely unreal team. And like, we battered the, did we batter that day? Um, I can't remember now, but it was just like, it was just like unbelievable. Like trying to do a team talk, I'm like, don't really need to say too much because these boys are class. So we're just going to carve up anyway. Do you know what I mean? But that was our like last opportunity to try and be like, yeah, guts, like pick me if you if you're struggling, sort of thing. Um, and then I actually I just started the second test then after, after that performance. So um, yeah, no, it was um, it's like a picture like you all obviously when you go on tour. Um, Dan the photographer like takes loads of pictures. Um, and there's a picture of me like sat in the changing room after I'm like, like blowing my lips, like thinking like I've done what I've like wanted to do all my life. Do you know what I mean? At that moment in time, um, I was like, I was content with, you know, what I had done, like, like a massive sort of pat on the back. Obviously after that, you have more aspirations and goals and that, but at that moment in time, I was like, I'm, like, I've done it. Like, like I've done it, mom. Do you know what I mean? That sort of feeling. <laughs> 
like obviously James Bond was in there, Daniel Craig, which was a surreal experience as well, wasn't it, James? Oh, berserk, mate. Berserk. We shared a few champagnes that night, mate. Jesus. Fuck. Dan, what are some of your best memories of that tour? Um, that was probably one of the, the good, uh, uh, one of the best moments. Obviously, coming off the chain room, like brilliant euphoria, you know, won the test series. Walking into the chain room, I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's that guy from James Bond. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, what's happening, pal? Like, give him a pro handshake. He's like, looking at me, like, who's this guy? Like, sort of thing. But he's like, champagne flowing. And then Jamie starts singing, dun, 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 dun. And it's just going around the, going around the changing room. Um, then we went over to uh, to Dublin, like, pre, pre-tour to have, like, a training camp. And we went out in Dublin. Um you know, I had a few beers. Everyone's like, you know, taking a turn to stand up on the bar and do a sing song. And, you know, Phil's he's there. It was just like, you know, like players that I grew up watching, like Paul O'Connell and stuff like that. And next minute you're having a beer with them. And that's what's class about rugby. And it's, it's sort of similar now with like, you look at the current Welsh squad, like Louis Rees Samet, like he would have grown up watching George North. And like now they're like, you know, good mates, like, have a beer together after the game and stuff like that. That's what's, like, really class about rugby, I think. 